Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. This is my third video in a series on claims that historic cartographers knew about the landmass of Antarctica that today and for many millions of years has been covered over with thick ice sheets. The Piri Reis map and the Philippe Bouch maps were used as evidence by Charles Hapgood that the history and science of the South Pole are wrong and that there must have been a lost ancient civilization that once mapped the lost continent and this knowledge was passed down through time. Well, as we've discussed, the Piri Reis map is likely showing us South America and the Philippe Bouch map is hypothetical, as outlined by the cartographer himself. Neither map is evidence that Antarctica was ever ice-free in human memory, and they're certainly not evidence for a lost civilization. But there is also a third map, known as the Orontius Phineas map of 1531, and here you can see a continent at the South Pole in all its glory. Those that promote this map as evidence for an ice-free Antarctica say it is at the correct scale with key features of precise longitudes, which, if true, means it is a far better map of Antarctica than the famous Piri Reis map. And yes, compare the map to what we know about Antarctica and there are clear similarities, but once again, it's the differences that most tend to overlook, or look for some unscientific workaround. The cartographer labels the landmass Terra Australis, a landmass that Hapgood had to rotate by 20 degrees, move by 1,600 kilometers, and then even alter the map scale to make the landmass fit with a known outline of Antarctica. The landmass on the map is 230% the size of Antarctica. As well as all these changes, Hapgood had to move whole coastlines around to make it fit, slicing up the map and recombining it to fit his hypothesis better, which isn't very scientific at all. The cartographer of the map is known as Orontius Phineas, although his actual name was Orontz Finney. He was a 16th century French mathematician who wrote about a number of scientific subjects including astronomy and also works on arithmetic and geometry. He drew his first map of France in 1525, and of course his world map in 1531, where he introduces the landmass of Terra Australis. As well as by Charles Hapgood, the map has been cited by Zechariah Sitchin, and there are often claims that the map is drawn from much older source maps that originated from a lost ancient civilization. But once again, we need to read the legends on the map because the cartographer himself tells us quite clearly that this map is entirely new and not reliant on older maps. The text reads, Behold, for you, dear reader, Orontius Phineas Delphinus offers an elegantly produced and accurately printed geography, never before seen, which has the shape of a human heart, and he presents for your gaze provinces, islands, seas, rivers and mountains, unseen before now. Known neither to Ptolemy nor Eudoxus, not Eratosthenes or Macrobius, but which have lain in the shadows up to the present day. Therefore, please accept this small present with both arms, and consult it usefully. So, what are we looking at? Well, here is Europe, here is Africa, and here is the southern half of South America, which the cartographer shows is around the size of Africa. So what is Terra Australis? Finney was so sure that Ptolemy, Eudoxus and co had not known about the things on this map because part of Terra Australis was only discovered in 1520. This was the discovery of the land of Tierra del Fuego. Located just off the southernmost tip of South America, it was discovered by Portuguese explorer Ferdinand Magellan, and the name Tierra del Fuego is actually Spanish for Land of Fire. Magellan was the first European to travel this far south, and he could see that it contained many fires when viewed from the sea, which he wrongly thought were the native people waiting to ambush the explorers. A few years later, and cartographers and geographers speculated that Tierra del Fuego was actually part of a much larger landmass, a lost continent called Terra Australis, an assumption or myth that permeated 16th century Europe and influenced all the cartographers of the day, all because of the discovery of Tierra del Fuego. 
Here we can see Terra Australis on a map of 1570 created by Abraham Ortelius, and it continued to be included on maps all the way up to the 18th century. But the idea of a southern continent goes all the way back to Roman times, even though the maps from the day didn't show it. That was because it was just an idea, that all of the land of the northern hemisphere must be balanced by land in the southern hemisphere. The theory re-emerged in the 16th century because of the discoveries by Ferdinand Magellan of the landmass south of South America. On his map, Finney also labels the southern land as recently discovered but not yet completely explored, which implies he is referring to the then recent discovery by Magellan. All of the Antarctic depictions are based on an idea, an idea that a large landmass was needed at the southern tip of the planet to counterbalance all the land in the north, something that the 16th century geographers openly admit in their writings. Here we can see Terra Australis by Jacques de Vaux in 1538, again, not based on anything other than a popular idea. There were scraps of information by historic seafarers, various errors in observations, there was the continental counterbalance idea of the Greco-Roman era, and then the discovery by Magellan, which were taken together and hypothetically mapped as a southern polar landmass. It was very much an idea, a hypothesis, and in 1597, another cartographer, Cornelius Whitefeet, even wrote that he believed the landmass was so big in the south that it extended all the way up to the equator, shown in a similar way on this 1587 map by Mercator. As you can see, all of these cartographers were guessing and speculating. No two maps are the same, and none of them state that they used ancient sources to produce their depiction of the landmass. Of course, none of them were accurate, and we know it was simply the development of an idea, and certainly not based on any lost maps of a mysterious ancient civilization. The idea of using maps of a lost civilization has no solid foundations, and also means we should discard the words of the cartographers themselves, which to me is unfair and very unscientific. So, I may have expelled a few myths in recent videos, but I do think it is very much needed. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.